guys heard of Volgograd city in Russia? But even if not, I'm sure you've heard of Stalingrad. Well, Volgograd is a new name of Stalingrad. The city was renamed in 1961 after destalinization, when Khrushchev cancelled all the names with Stalin. By the way, this is the second longest city of Russia, which stretches along the river for almost 100 kilometers. So I better start exploring now. Stalingrad was an urban planning experiment of the Soviet Union and now this is one of the few linear cities of the world. The experiment was implemented here due to city's location along the banks of the river named Volga and the need to send goods up and down the river. By the way, Volga is one of the biggest rivers in the world and it's considered to be the symbol of Russia. In one of the longest cities of Russia there is the longest street of course. They say it's more than 60 kilometers. Let's have a ride on Vtaraya Pradolna Street. At Volgi da Yeniseya, na dani nischeis kilometri, Rasseya, Maya Rasseya. After driving in the longest street, I decided to leave the car because public transport in the city is quite interesting to use as well. In Volgograd, there is the only in Russia metro tram. It's an original transport that combines metro and tram. So basically, it's a tram that goes on ground on tram lines and then it goes underground the same trap on the entrance to the metro you don't pay because you pay in a tram because basically it's a tram and from the tunnel just in metro and now like a usual tram it's genius it's very genius i'm surprised that in volgograd there is a museum of Stalin because after the destalinization his personality was cancelled everywhere but this is Stalingrad so let's check out the Stalin Museum Stalin considered himself Russian Georgian. By the way, he was born in Gori, Georgia. Recently I was there and there was a huge museum of Stalin. In this one, though, it's mostly newspapers from the Soviet Union and different documents. <laughs> like there is no one in this museum and <laughs> I was scared of Stalin. Wow, I found a real gem in this museum. So this is a newspaper that dates back to Thursday, 10th of May, 1945, where Stalin addresses to people saying that on the 7th of May, a document about capitulation of Nazi Germany was signed. And on the 8th of May, it was a final document signed, then he says that they cannot trust Nazi, but they saw that they really started their capitulation, so basically uh, they are saying how happy they are about the great day of victory. This is the very newspaper with those news. Wow! Just wow.
Okay, actually, there are some really curious documents in this museum. For example, here I found poems of Stalin. I didn't know that he wrote poems. Also, you can read his chats with his mother and family. Obviously, they called him Soso. Stalin is his nickname that comes from the word stal, which means metal, so harsh, strong. By the way, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I was born after the Soviet Union, but I can guess that this huge machine is a radio. Here in the Museum of Stalin there is also, as they say, patriotic cafe named Blindage. It's all in the theme of the Soviet Union and war. Uh, while I'm waiting for my food I will arrange some business here. Hello. Это Элли Фром Раша. Да, я ищу монтажера для моих видео. Как это нет? As usual. Селёдочка, картошечка и лук. Very, very Russian style. Mm. Селёдка. I love it so much. So good. I got warm in Stalin's cafe and it was time to visit the main landmark of Stalingrad. Um, I mean Volgograd. Here I am. This place is named Mamaev Kurgan and this is the most important holy place for people of our country because during the World War II the most fierce and lengthy battle that changed the course of the world history, the Battle of Stalingrad, happened right here. In the Soviet Union this spot was simply named height number 102 in the military maps, but now it's the world-famous spot named Mamaev Kurgan. During the Battle of Stalingrad, the Red Army lost about 1,130,000 people, and there was half a million of civil population in Stalingrad before the battle, and only about 10,000 people out of half a million were left alive. Basically, everything here was in bodies and blood. The whole city was destroyed, including all the monuments, etc. Only a few years after the end of the war, memorial complex dedicated to the Great Patriotic War was built. In Russia, you will hear more about the Great Patriotic War, which is part of the World War II, where the Soviet Union took part. And here, by the eternal fire on the walls, you can see the names of everyone who died in the Stalingrad battle. It's crazy, it's millions of names. Москва. В последний час. 
Наши войска полностью закончили ликвидацию немецко-фашистских войск, окруженных в районе Сталинграда 2 февраля 1943 года. Историческое сражение под Сталинградом закончилось полной победой наших войск. to explore Volgograd region as well and from here my friend is joining me Anna she's so happy that she's traveling in Volgograd region we're going to a town named Elton and literally no one goes there during this time of the year and also it's only Someone lost their bank card <laughs> and they're looking who lost it. And it's also one-way ticket. There is no ticket to go back. I have no idea how we'll return here. <laughs> yeah, maybe the population of Elton will increase for two people because it's only one-way ticket. <laughs> We really don't know what to expect about this village and no tourists go there at this time and for some reason there are marshrutkas Marshrutkas? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that go there but there are no buses or marshrutkas or trains or anything that goes back to Volgograd so we either stay there forever or maybe hitchhike Yes I will show Only you two how options. to hitchhike <laughs> Our final destination. <laughs> it's the end of the road, yeah. basically. <laughs> Just it is. After six hours in a bus, we are in the sanatorium Elton, and it seems like a very popular place. There are even two babushkas with us. <laughs> Leisure center. Maybe there is also a club for partying. We have a cat here and our room in this luxurious uh, sanatorium. Oh, just look at this Soviet fridge. It was a long way. I met a local here, Smagul. He is Kazakh and he was born here. А почему здесь живет много казахов? Ну, рядом здесь граница. Казахстан, Россия, мы здесь с детства живем. Мы родились здесь. Ну, понимаешь, что обычно традиции любого народа сохранить надо. Вот я 20 лет назад здесь на этом месте, купив юрты в Казахстане, начал заниматься своей культурой, ну, казахской. Ну, а потом рядом же построил русскую избу. Я даю понять, что между нашим народом никогда не было враждебных отношений, хорошие отношения. Я надеюсь, что так и будет всегда. Вот у меня в казахской юрте, когда посидят, обычные традиции узнают, потом переходят в русскую избу. Там тоже я сделал так, как было раньше. Во время СССР тут вообще не было никакой границы, да? Ну, конечно. Тогда же не было, вообще границ не было. Ну... В пределах Советского Союза. Много Это... казахов живет? Ну, сейчас да. Вообще, Здесь... в целом, в Волгоградской области, да? В Волгоградской области около ну, от 43 до 46 тысяч казахов mm -hmm. проживает. 
ну, здесь, ну, здесь граница рядом. On the border with Kazakhstan there is a salt lake named Elton. This is the largest mineral lake in Europe. Lake Elton has a curative salty mud that together with the salty air treat respiratory and digestive disease, skin problems and aid the nervous system. Nobody goes there in winter though and they say it's quite dangerous there at this time. So I don't know whether it will turn out good for our nervous system. When we told to that local man that we're going to the lake, he asked why are you going there in winter? And then we said that we're gonna walk there and he said no, there are walls and it's very windy in steps, don't go there. But here we are. Minus 14 here feels like minus 30 maybe? What do you feel like? Minus 20, yeah. 30. Exactly. For me, Yakutia seemed a nicer climate than this. This wind, it goes to your bones. Oh, my cheeks are freezing. And there is Nowhere to hide. Step, just step. No trees, nothing. Absolutely nowhere to hide. Зима в сердце, на душе в юга. Знаю я, что можем мы друг без друга. For centuries, Lake Elton was visited for skin and respiratory treatments by Russian emperors and empresses. You can even see the remnants of Catherine the Great's bath here. Well, it was a beloved spot for Russian rulers, but it didn't become my favorite one. A philosophical question, why we came here? Well, we just wanted to come here. And I think it's a reason enough. Или ты почему приехала? Are you having a lot of fun? Enough. <laughs> enough fun for today. I hope we survive and get back. It's so nice to be back in this warm room. When we went to the lake, the wind was to our back, so it was kind of fine. But when we started to go back from the lake, the wind was to our face and it hurt so much. And I swear, I've only experienced such wind when I was climbing Mount Elbrus, really. And here I didn't have a windbreaker, so my down jacket was useless i was feeling the whole wind so tell how we went back it was awful awful wind i really i haven't such experience maybe only in tiriberka in december i felt something like that but uh, i couldn't feel my nose my cheeks my fingers <laughs> my eyes hurt like the wind was so so strong. For you it was kind of having fun, but I thought it was really dangerous. I thought we could just stay there. Yeah, uh, don't do this. I think, I think it was quite a dangerous thing to do, because going back the wind was too strong and absolutely nowhere to hide, like it's a step, nothing. But when you return, you feel really happy. <laughs> now I'm happy. It's conscious of life. I think it was a very dangerous thing to do. It was physically hard. 
to go back because of the strong wind. So, guys, don't go to Lake Alton in winter. Now I partly understand the notes of the Germans and Soviets who share their war memories and they underline how rough winters in Stalingrad were. I think it's definitely because of the wind and there is nowhere to hide in steps. And even though this is the south of Russia, I will remember this as one of the coldest trips in my life. At the end, the most vivid impression after experiences like this is the opportunity to return home safely. 